Hi, Nathan Cole here from natesviolin.com. Today we're going to build on the last video, the Goldilocks method that was about syncing the left and right hands up for fast playing. Today we're going to get that fast playing even faster, hopefully more accurate and more even as well. It's all about parallel tracks. So let's take a look at uh, some Paganini, this uh, Moto Perpetuo. Need some work, yeah? So it's, uh, it's like in the words of the emperor from Amadeus, there are simply too many notes. And then if, if Paganini responded like Mozart, he would say, there are just as many as I require, neither more nor less. Anyway, the question is how to practice to get this fast, in tune, and even easy, right? Now we all know about the metronome. I've got, uh, where is it? Trusty metronome app, you may have the old, uh, wooden glue and metal one. Yeah. It's the classic tool to practice fast things. Everybody has worked it up, right, with the metronome. I just got to work it up. You know, put the metronome at whatever. That's uh, for the half note. All right, let's start at 104 here. Play the whole thing, right? If I play this whole piece right there at 104, it's going to take me all day. Um, I'm well known, actually, for uh, having rules for the metronome. Nathan's Rules of the Metronome. I wrote an article about it. I linked to that. That's worth checking out. If you want the easily digestible version, I made a, a little one-pager for you worksheet. It's linked right there in the description. Go ahead and grab that, and then come back here and put those rules into action, okay? Because with the parallel tracks, and you can, of course, see those behind me and many, many more that you can imagine, the different tracks have different trains on them. And all those trains might be carrying different cargo at different speeds, right? All at the same time. They all arrive at the same place in the end. That's what we're going to be after here. If you've trained in any sport, such as running, any sort of endurance thing, you may have taken advantage of interval training, this is really closely related to that. You know, the idea is if you're running a marathon and in the end you want to run an eight minute per mile pace, that's pretty good. I'd love to do that. I've never run a marathon. But when you train, you don't just train by running marathons, <laughs> starting slowly and, you know, trying to gradually get your marathons faster. It would take forever. And, you know, most people can't even run a marathon at any speed in the beginning. So you work on shorter distances at a faster pace. So you're aiming for that eight minutes per mile pace in the end, but you still train quarter miles, you know, 400 meters. Maybe that's at a six minute per mile pace. And you might even do sprints, you know, 100 meter sprints, even faster than that. And you could do all of those in the same day. So it's parallel workouts at different speeds. It's exactly what we're going to do here. So let's go back to the, the Paganini here and show you a little bit of what we're dealing with, right? We've got this whole monster here, right? How is it? Four pages here plus a repeat. What I want to do first is I want to establish a baseline tempo. It's what I said we're not going to do for the marathon training, right? I want to figure out, is there a speed, is there a pace at which I could play this entire thing? Now, it wouldn't have to be note perfect, but it should be a pace where I'm not going to get flustered or play everything out of tune. So, you know, let me uh, go through some different parts of this. Let's take the beginning. What would be an easy, easy tempo for the beginning? Okay, something like that. I'm not even turning on the metronome at this point. Um, let's look at some 
thornier parts. Maybe I could go down to the bottom of the page with that same pace work here. Yeah, I mean, it works. I'm, I'm feeling slightly stressed. You know, this is a piece that I haven't really refined. Um, how about these, the first and second endings? I can already tell, I'm going to slow down this bass line. I just, I don't want to feel stressed at all in this. Uh, yeah, here's a passage I've marked on the third page. Yeah, I can tell. I, I just want a little easier. Something like that. Now, what is that going to be? as I go back to the first page. I can use the tap feature on my metronome, right? So, by tapping... That puts me right about at 80. Okay. So, what I'm going to do in my music... And let's see... I'm going to bring up my commenting, and I'm going to put bass line, quarter equals 80. And uh, <laughs> this little 96 that's over here, we'll make that uh, aspirational. Half note equals 96 equals the man himself, Heifetz. So, we've got some ground to make up, right? If we're gonna, um, we're gonna try to catch Heifetz and, <clears throat> you know, that doesn't need to be the goal. But in any case, I've written it down. This is important. <laughs> Write these things down, because you may think you'll remember, you know, your baseline tempo and the tempo you want to reach. Write it down. If you're using an iPad, it's great because you can have as many copies, as many colors as you want. Now, that baseline... <laughs> Again, you can see there's a big difference between that bass line and where I eventually want to be. So that number might seem really low, and that's okay. You're almost always going to be working at a faster tempo than that. That's why it's the bass line. And I'm going to start by working in big chunks. I want to find out what sections are already easily above the bass line, which ones are closer to that bass line, and I'm going to mark those. Okay, and I'm going to put some comfortable numbers there. So, you already heard me play the beginning. Let me remind myself, what is that bass line? 80 to the quarter note. And you notice I'm not going to leave the metronome on. I don't like playing with it for the most part. I use it to remind me. So that beginning at 80, how does it feel? That, that feels <laughs> very slow, very manageable. Um, I mean, not just manageable, but fairly easy. So, let me look at this. When I'm looking for a big chunk that, you know, I, I really feel sort of has the same tempo ability for me, um, would the whole first page qualify? Let me see about the bottom. And I have one more reminder. Okay. Yeah, I would say that so far, this entire first page could be comfortably above the bass line. I want to go conservative, give it a comfortable number. What might it be? I might, I like the tap feature again. I'm going to tap. That puts me at 96, <laughs> which happens to be the tempo I'm aiming for, for the half note, if I want to catch high fits, huh? But 96 for the quarter, would that be a comfortable current speed for this entire page? Uh, how about further down? Yeah, that seems about right. So, what I might do, this whole page at the side, I might put 
96. And again, because I'm using an iPad, it's very easy later on to erase that. Let's say I do some work. Oh, it's no longer 96. Now I'm up to 104 for this page. That's going to come later. Looking for big chunks. Now maybe the second page I try, I don't have to go by pages actually, maybe it's from here through the endings that feels like it, mm, maybe that's more of a 90 at the moment. Uh, the second half of this page is more like 100. Again, working in broad sections. I just want to get a sense, what are the sections that need the most work? What's lagging the furthest behind? Then I can start there. And again, I want to go conservative because, you know, there's no need to nail the exact number for the day, but I'd rather go low than high. If I go too high, then I come back for my work and I've got to lower that number. And that just, that feels kind of crummy. I like to keep tasting success each time, at least when I'm in control of that. So I've gone through the whole piece, conservative numbers for the different sections. And now I'm going to start with the sections with the lowest number. It's a little bit like uh, if you've played Monopoly, you can't start uh, building hotels on this property here if you don't even have any houses on you know, the adjacent property. So I'm going to jump right to a section and I didn't give this a number yet. Let's do it. This is a section I jumped to earlier. And we're going to be looking really at something like uh, these bars. Let's find what would be a comfortable. You know, even that's at the moment feeling a little stressed. I don't like that. Just those far four bars is a good chunk. Now, what would that be? I'm going to tap it. <laughs> takes the metronome a good four taps to give me something there. It's about 54. Is that feeling right? What I just played? Now I've got to be honest with myself. Am I still feeling a little hurried? Yeah, I am. Let me take it down to 50. Yeah, that's feeling very manageable. And of course, I'm going to mark that. So this little section gets a 50. All right. Now, I want to bring it up closer. Now, you notice that this is lower than my baseline tempo, right? Um, that's because if there's one tiny little section, let me switch back here. If there's one tiny little section, that's kind of gumming up the whole piece. I don't feel like I have to put my baseline tempo all the way down to that. Um, so if, if there are small exceptions, I feel fine with my baseline tempo a little bit higher. And then there are a couple teeny little sections um, that may be lower than that. In this case, this little four bar chunk at 50. So I want to bring it up starting to the baseline, right? And what's holding me back? I can't play the whole passage at the baseline tempo, right? I can't play it faster than about 50. But could I play each beat faster? Yeah, I can play that faster. Could, you know, could play it as fast as you want. That's a good thing. So, you know, if I can, I can put a number on it. Now, that first beat, I can, I can basically sprint it, right? I don't even need to put a number on it. I can play it as fast as I need. But how about... Um, or... Where are those kind of beats now? It 
something like that. What do I tap for that? 100. Yeah. Is there any beat in here that I couldn't play at 100? Maybe that tiny little corner. So that's where I'm going to start, because if that's really the thing that's keeping each beat from reaching 100. And again, you see I'm doing this work without the metronome on. I'm going to remind myself. All right. Alright, so in those whole four bars, I can get them all up to a hundred. What am I going to do? I'm going to write it down. Beats 100. And this is so that, you know, if I get interrupted, the phone rings and I decide to answer it, I can come back later. Oh, what was I doing? Because believe me, we're going to have lots of numbers flying around here. Oh, okay, I had my beats at a hundred here. That's where I can come back to my work. I'm going to do some good repetitions with that. Now, how about two beats together? For every two beats, could I do those at 100? Remind myself. Uh huh, that one, again, no big surprise, that one's a little bit of a problem. Let me do the individual beats again at a hundred. Okay. Am I at a hundred still? Nice. The rest of it. Nice. Now, I was doing these two beats together, and these two beats. I'd also like to do these two, right? And these two. Let me erase those brackets so they don't gunk everything up. So I'm going to skip the first beat and start on the second, and play the second and third. Etc. So every two beats I decide. I can do it 100, and I'm going to mark that too. Um, I might, might put two beats 100. Then I might go back to the beat. Can I get each individual beat up to 110, 120? These sorts of uh, little chunks, I might call these uh, middle distances, middle distance running. I'm going to leave this section for now feeling successful, okay? Because the biggest mistake I could make would be, oh, okay, well, I started this whole thing at 50. Now, let me see, what, what's the whole section? Can I play the whole section at 100? Chances are I'm going to fail, and I'm going to get sucked into a bunch of work there, and I'm going to eventually leave the section feeling failure. Rather than leaving it now with success, I come back right where I left off tomorrow or the next session, because I have my numbers written. Now I'm going to alternate with another section I could even do the beginning, couldn't I? Uh, because that beginning was already quite fast, or could be, right? I had said 104 as a general tempo for that entire page. But in truth, that beginning, could I do some sprints? Yeah, I could, right? And I might do those with separate bows. I might do them slurred. The point is, there's very little of this that is going to give me problems speed-wise in the sprints. Middle distances, of course I want to check those. And what would that speed be? Let's tap that. Dun, dun, bump, bump, bump. Well, 
if I'm getting that fast, we can tap half notes, right? Ooh, look at that. That is 86 to the half note. Not so far off from uh, Mr. Heifetz there. 96 to the half note. Can I really play every two beats of that beginning at 86 to the half note? Yeah, I think so. So I'm going to mark that. Two beats, 86 to the half note. It's really important to do these sprints and middle distances fast for discovery purposes. You need to see how your fingers and your hand will behave at those fast speeds and to test out the synchronization with the bow. You saw me do some slurred just to hear the evenness of the fingers. I also want to do it with separate bows. And by the way, if you've ever had trouble syncing up those two hands and you have not seen the Goldilocks video, which is all about syncing the hands, check that one out. Slurring can save some wear and tear on the arm, lets you work the left hand patterns without getting completely tired. When I'm doing sprints, I tend not to put a number on it. I might just mark something like, okay, these two lines, whoops, need to tell it I'm commenting, don't I? These two lines, I can put SP for sprint or for speed or whatever you want to say. And maybe this line too, I can include that in the sprint. I just mark it that way. Once again, iPad, a lifesaver for this. You can mark, erase, use the different colors without, you know, rubbing away paper. In the old days, you'd have to buy a new copy of the music showing my age. So, you get the idea. Parallel tracks. Anytime you reach an impasse or a block on one track, you just switch to another track. So one section is giving you a problem at a certain speed. You either go to smaller or larger chunks within that section, or you switch to a different track. You move from success to success. It's so much more interesting, so much healthier than kind of, you know, figuratively ramming your head into the wall, working it up with the metronome. So, what's going to happen over time with this practice method? I'm going to keep bringing the numbers up, right? In the bigger sections. At the same time, I'm going to increase the portions of the piece I can sprint. This uh, Paganini Moto Perpetua is kind of like a four minute or five minute or whatever sprint. So by the end, I'd like to be basically sprinting everything. <laughs> but I'm going to be bringing the numbers up. You need to be prepared for your progress to get slower as you go along, right? You may make big gains in the first few days that you work this way, and it's really exciting. You need to be prepared for a plateau now and then. Maybe, maybe, occasionally a number moving backward. And if that happens, if a section isn't moving for a while or starts to go backward, take a closer look at your middle distance numbers. Okay, so what I mean by that Let's go to a section that we haven't looked at in detail. We'll take this section with the first and second endings. So, middle distance numbers. Let's say, for example, I'm not going to tell it I'm commenting again, that I had marked, okay, I've got my two beats. Baseline here was 90. I've done some work on it. Now, Baseline here is up to 120. Uh, for two beat sections, I've got 144. Um, right around here, it's more like 110. These are back to 144 and so forth for the rest of it. So these would be some middle distance numbers. Oh, and the bar the bar in this section, I've got generally at 120, with little exceptions. Now, those numbers are not super far off. There's a discrepancy with that uh, two-beat section that's at 110, but generally, they're about the same. And so, 
what that tells me is I can play most parts of this section in the middle distances about the same, about evenly. That means I need to work on my sprints, okay? I've got to go from middle distance to sprinting to get those numbers up. So, especially with that section, the... How can I turn that from a boring middle distance into a sprint? Here, there are other practice methods and techniques. You can use your whole bag of tricks uh, to turn middle distance runs into sprints. But that's what I would have to do to work on combining those beats faster and faster. Now, let's say that, and we'll go back, instead there was a much greater disparity. And for some reason, I don't know why this would be the case, but um, these two beats are this bar, for example, I could only do at 80. Whoa, well that's a, that's a huge difference, right? I've got that one thing way off from the others. Now, that tells me that I've got an actual problem to solve in that bar, right? And so it's no good trying to get it faster and faster without solving the actual problem. Could be a shift, could be a string crossing. And so I would need to solve that problem first. When I get the big section numbers up, when they're all in the same ballpark, then I can finally start running my marathons right? So all the big sections kind of going together, I can start playing the entire piece. And when I do that, what did we have as our uh, starting baseline tempo, right? 80, 80 for the quarter note. By the time I've done my parallel tracks method, I'm going to be able to play the whole piece a lot faster than 80, and I will have had a lot more fun along the way. Now everything we've done so far I would just call it plain vanilla metronome work. No tricks, no special practice techniques, no actual problem solving except changing speeds and changing the length of chunks, right? Feel free to use all kinds of creative practice methods um, while you're doing this just to accelerate it. You know, if you combine this work with the rules of the metronome that I link to in the description, right? Combine it with metronome techniques such as off beats, weak beats, or to even to get away from the metronome, uh, accelerate it with other techniques to get past trouble spots. Note grouping, I've got a video on note, note grouping you can check out. Sprinting really is a form of note grouping, but I go into a lot more detail in that video. So, I would love to see this accelerate your progress on any fast piece that you're working on or, you know, any fast section in a piece. Parallel tracks, let me know in the comments how this works for you. If you're able to finally solve a fast piece or passage using the parallel tracks method, grab that worksheet and of course visit me at Nate's Violin for many more tips, tricks, and videos. I look forward to seeing you next time.